Hi students, welcome to yet another session of my class. We are discussing paper World Classics. Let us continue the topic. That is yesterday in the last class we discussed about uh, Sanskrit literature. Let us continue the topic Sanskrit literature. That is today we are going to discuss about some writers in Sanskrit literature. First one is Sri Harsha. Sri Harsha Indian author and epic poet whose Naidya Charda or Naidha is among the most popular Mahakavyas in Sanskrit literature. Yes, Sri Harsha. Sri Harsha, Indian author and epic poet whose very famous work that is Naidya Charda, Naidya Charda or Naidha is among the most popular Mahakavyas in Sanskrit literature. His Naidya or Naidya Charida is considered as one of the most popular Mahakavyas in Sanskrit literature. And he was a great poet and philosopher in Sanskrit literature, the Sri Harsha. And he was dignified with the title Narabharati. Please note that title for one mark. Uh, question it is important. He was dignified with the title Narabharati because of the wide acceptance of his poem or Kavya Naishada Charida. Yes, he was dignified. He got a title. What was that title? Narabharati because of the wide ac acceptance of his poem or Kavya Naishada Charida. And the details of his life are uncertain. Naidi Charda in 22 Candles is a retelling of the tale of Nala, king of Naiha and Demendi, princess of Virbha from the Mahabharata. Yes, Naidi Charda in 22 Candles. Yes, this particular poem was written in 22 Candles and the storyline is, it is a retelling of the Tale of Nala, that is King of Naiha and Demendi, that is Princess of Virbha from the Mahabharata. It is a story of love, overcoming obstacles, ending happily in marriage. It is the storyline of Naidya Charita. It is a story of love, overcoming obstacles and ending happily in marriage. His mastery of meter is evident in his poems because, but... He has been criticized for occasional obscurity and excessive verbal ornamentation. Sometimes he was criticized uh, for his writing style. That is his mastery of meter is evident in his poems. But he has been criticized for occasional, sometimes, uh, yes, obscurity. Yes, we can trace obscurity in his writings, occasional obscurity and the excessive verbal ornamentation, that is the use of excessive ornamental languages. He has been criticized for this occasional obscurity and the excessive verbal ornamentation. Next, we are going to discuss about another Sanskrit author, Jayadeva. Jayadeva, also known as Jaydev. Yes, Jayadeva, he, was, he is also known as Jaydev. He was a Sanskrit poet during the reign of Lakshman Sen, the 12th century king of Bengal. He was lived during the time of or during the reign of uh, Lakshman Sen, that is the king of Bengal during the period that is 12th century. And he was also known as Jaydev, he was a Sanskrit poet. And he was born in a Brahmin family. And he is most known for his epic poem, Gita Govinda. That is his very famous epic poem, that is Gita Govinda. Please note that he is, he is famous for, he is most known for his epic poem, Gita Govinda. This text depicts the divine love of Krishna and his consort Radha. Then what is the storyline or what is this particular poem about? This text depicts the divine love of Krishna and his consort Radha. He was closely associated with the temple of Jagannatha at Puri. 
where recitation of his Gita Govinda was regularly performed by the Maharis, that is temple dancers. And he was closely associated with the one temple named the Jagannatha at Puri and where yes, their recitation of his uh, epic form Gita Govinda was regularly performed in that temple by the temple dancers otherwise called Maharis. And this form which presents Radha is greater than Hari is considered an important text in the Bhakti movement of Hinduism. Yes, then what is the relevance of this particular text that is Gita Govinda? This form which presents Radha is superior than or greater than, superior to or greater than Hari. Yes, this form that is which presents Radha is superior to Hari or Radha is superior, uh, greater than uh, Hari is considered an important text in the Bhakti movement of Hindu, Hinduism. This Gita Govinda is considered, an, considered as an important text in the Bhakti movement of Hinduism. He was a learner poet and a Hindu mendicant celebrated for his poetic genius in eastern India, particularly in the court of Bengal kingdom. He was considered as a learner poet and a Hindu mendicant. Mendicant in the sense means that is uh, given for uh, begging etc. That is, uh, that is the meaning of uh, mendicant. And he was considered as a loner poet. Then uh, what is the meaning of uh, loner? Loner means a person that prefers not to associate with the others. So he was a loner poet most of his time. That is, he does not or he did not like to mingle with others. He was a loner poet and a Hindu mendicant. That is, mendicant is a uh, that is like a uh, beggar. Hindu mendicant. That is, uh, sannyasi, etc. That is, and a Hindu mendicant celebrated for his poetic genius in eastern India, particularly in the court of Bengal kingdom. He is notable as the earliest author of hymns that are included the Guru Granth Sahib, the primary scripture of Sikhism. This is notable as the earliest author of hymns that are included the Guru Granth Sahib, the primary scripture of uh, Sikhism and he is also institutionalized to the Devadasi system in Oriya temples. Devadasi system means women who were dedicated, who uh, servant to God or who, who are dedicated their life to God. So they are not allowed to marry any mortal. Such type of uh, women, they were called Devadasi. That is servant to God, dedicated their full life to God and they are not allowed to marry any uh, mortal. So he is also institutionalized the Devadasi system in Oriya temples and his hymns are written in a mixture of Sanskrit and Eastern Upper Brahmsha. Yes, his uh, dialect, the dialect he used, his hymns are written in a mixture of Sanskrit and Eastern Upper Abhabramsha. Yes, it is a mixture of Sanskrit and Eastern Abhabramsha. I think all of you understand uh, Jayadeva. Yes, next we are going to talk about Bhasha. Bhasha is one of the oldest non-classical playwrights in the history of Sanskrit literature. Yes, Bhasha is considered as a one of or Bhasa is one of the oldest non-classical playwrights, that means dramatists in the history of Sanskrit literature. And he is also known as the father of Sanskrit drama. Yes, Bhasa is considered as the father of Sanskrit drama. In 1912, an Indian scholar discovered and published 13 texts of Bhasa's dramas, previously known by the allusions of ancient Sanskrit dramatist. Yes, uh, in 1912, an Indian scholar uh, discovered and published 13 texts of Bhasa's dramas, 
had previously known by the allusions of ancient Sanskrit dramatist. His best work, Sopna Vasavadatta, otherwise called the Dream of Vasavadatta, depicts a king losing and then regaining his kingdom from a usurper. From an usurper. So his best work, that is Sopna Vasavadatta, otherwise called the Dream of Vasavadatta, depicts a king losing and then regaining his kingdom from an usurper. The majority of his dramas are ingenious adaptations on themes of heroism and romantic love borrowed from India's two great epics, which are the two great epics, the Ramayana and the Mahabharata. That most of his themes, that majority of his dramas are ingenious adaptations on themes of heroism and romantic love. And these themes are borrowed from India's two great epics, that is the Ramayana and the Mahabharata. And Bhasa deviated from the accepted dramaturgy of the time by portraying battle scenes and killings on the stage. Yes, he deviated from the accepted dramaturgy or accepted style of the time by portraying battle scenes. He portrayed some battle scenes in his uh, dramas and killings on the stage, that is violence he portrayed, that is uh, he deviated from the accepted dramaturgy of the time. That means portray battle scenes and killing. That is violence on the stage. His influence is seen in the works of the great 5th century dramatist Kalidasa, who consciously imitated and improved upon some of Pasa's literary models. Later, we can trace the influence of Bhasa in the works of the great 5th century dramatist Kalidasa. He consciously imitated and improved upon some of Bhasa's literary motifs. So I think all of you understand this session. We are discussing Sanskrit literature and uh, main writers in Sanskrit literature. That is today we discussed um, Sri Harsha, Jayadeva and Bhasa. I think all of you understand this session and there is a homework for you and the homework is write a note on Sri Harsha, Jayadeva and Bhasa. Write your homework and send back to me. Thank you. Have a nice day. See you again.